Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the last webinar for 2022 from the US team. Uh, this is a, an interesting one, and it's going to, you know, there's a lot of information um, as we talk about the different analysis types uh, that are available within, within Idea Statica. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started uh, just because we have a lot of information to cover. So next slide. Um, so just a reminder, as far as uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, go into the control panel and type in the questions um, right there. Uh, we'll answer answer them at the end of the uh, session. Uh, we want to make sure we leave plenty of time for, for Q&A. Uh, so with that, let's kind of look at the agenda. Uh, and I apologize for those of you that haven't uh, attended before. Uh, my name is Dave Eckroat. I am the uh, director for Idea Statica US office. Uh, with me, uh, we have Andrea, who uh, is our product engineer here in the US. Um, and then a new person, uh, Jason McNeil, who will be our Western regional engineer. So those of you uh, in the Western part of the US will get to know Jason. Um, he, this is his first uh, webinar with us. Uh, so I guess the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of launch a poll first. And the poll is just related to the, the different analysis types in the software. So outside of the stress and strain analysis, um, have you previously tried any of those uh, analyses? Uh, so it's yes, no, tried them, but not sure what they were used for. So um, we'll give that a second to uh, for the poll to uh, close. Give it about another 10 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And let's see, how do I show those results? So basically, um, I apologize, I, oh, there we go. Um, so it's a 50-50. Some of you, you know, half of you have, 45% have, 45% have not. And there's the other 9% that just aren't quite sure why they're, <laughs> what they what they can do so that's great that you guys are here that's uh, exactly what we're why we're doing this presentation um so just kind of talking about what andrea will kind of be reviewing um in the session so really we have um in, in addition to the stress and strain analysis uh we have actually seven other analysis types um that are available within the software um so you have buckling analysis joint design resistance, uh, stiffness analysis, capacity design, fatigue, um, and then two new ones that were just added with um, version 22.1 back in October. Uh, one is for fire design, um, and then the last one is horizontal tying resistance. Um, so now this is only for the Euro code. Uh, it is not based on anything in AISC. Um, and actually, uh, IDEA has already done a webinar on the horizontal tying resistance. Um, so that link, uh, you see it's kind of highlighted. When the PowerPoint gets posted to the website, um, you'll be able to use that link to, to gain access to that webinar. Um, so we're not gonna really be covering that today uh, at this point. So um, with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand it off to Andrea and All right. uh, talk to you at the end, bye. All right, thank you, David. All right, so let's start because we, as David says, um, we have a lot of to cover today. And as you can see, we have uh, here is seven type of analysis. Um, I'll cover until fire design. And this is just like an introduction. In every slide, I have a link. So you can uh, go deep uh, into information in our site. So there you will have uh, tutorials, uh, all the theoretical background, but this is just like an introduction of what the software is doing for those type of analysis and also what you get as result. All right, so let's let's get started with the first item. Well, the first analysis that I have here, 
um, idea study get those linear buckling analysis and also it shows the associated buckling modes. As a result, it provides buckling load factor. So as a background, this factor is the number which the applied load must be multiplied by to obtain the buckling load magnitude, all right? Um, the buckling mode shapes, or, well, the buckling modes uh, presents the shape that the structure assumes when it buckles in a particular mode, right? But says nothing about the numerical values of displacements or stresses. This, if you have done, for instance, uh, model analysis, uh, this is like an analogy which calculates the natural frequency and provides qualitative information on the modes of vibration, the model shapes, for instance, but not on the actual magnitude or displacements. So when you are seeing the shape, the model, well, the, the shapes of the different modes in Idea Statica, the deformation has no unit and no magnitude, okay? You just observe the bucklet shape for every mode, and well, normally in linear buckling analysis, the first mode is the one that will tell you if your model is uh, well buckle and where is that percent and where is going to be the form uh, so you can have an idea. All right. So the red color, when you see that information in Idea Statica, uh, is the most deformed part where the software predicts that buckling will happen for the selected mode. So Let's let's use one model that I have already here prepared for you. Okay, let me bring this to the screen. Okay, so um, let me just show you this. So normally you have your connection over here. I mean, you do the stress strain analysis. That is the regular analysis that we normally do to do the check of all the components and do the finite element analysis in this joint, right? So normally, well, you run this analysis and you will get, well, the results for the bolts, welds, and the plates, okay? But then if you want to do this uh, analysis, well, this buckling analysis, you can go, I mean, you can calculate this and then after ask the buckling analysis. But then if you go directly to the check tab, Here you will see the calculate button and then you will see a drop down menu. Here you have the buckling uh, analysis, okay? So you can run that analysis, uh, the stress strain analysis and the buckling analysis at the same time, okay? We don't have that like by default because sometimes if you have uh, many load cases that will take more time, right? In this case, I, I just select just one load load case for this uh, analysis. And then you will see a buckling here item. And that will tell you the factor. But then if you go to the buckling here, buckling uh, tab over here in the check tab, you will see all the, sh all the modes, well, the six modes and its factor. Then you can activate the buckling shape over here, okay, like this. And if you click on the form shape, you will see how that is the form. Uh, let me, okay. Let me just click on here. So as I said, the first buckling, uh, well, the first buckling mode is the one like the most critical for this uh, connection, right? So what you can do with this, I mean, with these factors, how you evaluate this. So let me go back to my presentation here. And this is like a guide, so how you can evaluate this uh, buckling analysis. The first thing to do is identify where the buckling is happening, all right? If it's on the plates connecting individual members, for instance, this example you have here, uh, uh, column with this element over here and this plate is main connector on this connection right so the buckling is happening over here 
Then we have the second option that the buckling may happen in the stiffening plates in the joint, stiffeners, ribs, shirt, hunches, or in closed sections and thin wallet sections, right? So there are like different uh, options where you can identify or where you can categorize that buckling effect in your connection. Then once you identify where that is happening, you can compare that buckling factor versus the recommended limit factors. So let me show you the next slide. So once you identify if it's a global buckling uh, issue or a local buckling, the first global buckling, let's say category, uh, that means the buckling is affecting the stability of the joint. If it's a local buckling, that means it is not affecting the stability of the joint, but influencing the plates in other parts of the connection. Once you identify that, then you can compare the, the factor you get and compare it again the, the limits that you have over here. For instance, in this case, in the in the model that I was showing you, the buckling deformation here is being shown over, well, it is on the member, right? So for this case, I'll say that it's, um, let me just turn off this. Okay. I am not sure I cannot activate the mesh because I think I'll need to run this again. Anyway, so the the buckling issue is happening in one of the plates of the members, but it is not compromising, you know, the stability of this joint, right? So um, in this case, the factor is two. So if we compare against the recommended factor is three, so we are below that. So I'll say you can, let's say uh, stiff, this plate in this coped area of the of the element let me just show you how it looks so maybe uh, add a plate or whatever solution you come with here and then rerun the analysis and see how that is uh, improved i mean how that factor is improved another thing to mention is that um, by default we calculate six modes uh, in the book, linear buckling analysis, but for any reason you want to calculate more modes in this analysis, you can go to code setup here, and you can change the number of buckling modes. For this case, I think it's six is okay, but there are some reasons that make you to increase the number of modes that you want to calculate, you can do that there, okay? So I'll close this and show you what was kind of the solution for this cope beam. Let me show you here. Okay, so I put just a plate over here to, to stiff this element, right? And then I rerun the analysis, and then if you look at the buckling shape, now I can activate the mesh, so you, it's better to show you this. So, Deformation still there. I mean the buckling, the buckling deformation still there, but the factor increased to six, right? So that is above the three factor that we have recommended for you. Based on research and studies that we investigate, and also based on um, research that we have done in common with universities, right? So you can review those research in our site. Also, I am putting the links in that slide that I, I was showing you. So you can review those from where we are getting those recommended limit factors, okay? So this is the way I like to evaluate the buckling analysis in your connections, right? I'll, um, if you have more questions, feel free to put it there in the chat and we'll address those at the end, okay? So here are the links, so you can see from where we are getting those um, factors. All right. Um, let's now let's go now to the next one, to the next topic. 
Now we have uh, the stiffness analysis, okay? The stiffness of a connection is the capacity of rotation that a member has. So in Idea Statica, a member uh, needs to be selected to be the analyzed member, okay? And depending on what load you input, let's either uh, MOI, MC, or actual force, IDEA will analyze the rotational and actual stiffness of the member, okay? If you have more members and loads, also it considers the interaction of the full joint, and as a result, it will classify the connection as pin, semi-rigid, or rigid, depending on the code you are using. In this case, we are using the AISC classification, all right? So as a result, you will see this type of graph in Idea Statica, and that will create a moment versus rotation diagram. I mean, the, the stiffness value is uh, the moment divided by the rotation that that element can have, right? Depending well in the analysis. So um, then you can use that stiffness for for their analysis in your global software. So let's let's see how how we can do that stiffness analysis. Okay. So let me select this connection. So this is a connection that also I did like a stress strain analysis, okay? So always, always we recommend to have a stress strain analysis and then uh, do a copy and uh, select the, the analysis you want to use, all right? Always. Why? Because sometimes if you go directly to the type of analysis, let's say a stiffness analysis, maybe you will, you will get a, a bad result because of the modeling. So first, analyze the connection with the stress strain analysis, check that you don't have any issue with the form shape or with any modeling, in, well, with anything um, in the model part, you know, something is not being connected uh, correctly or whatever. So that is like a sanity check, the stress strain analysis. Then you do a copy and then you select the analysis that you want to use, as I did in this, in this case. So when you do a copy, you get another model over here in this drop down menu. So that will copy that connection to another, well, let's say file or connection here, okay? So in this case, I select, uh, well, in this case, I select stiffness analysis. If you hover the mouse over these options here, you will see what you're selecting. In this case, ST is a stiffness analysis, right? So that's how you change the type of analysis here in this model, okay? Then for the stiffness analysis, you need to select what member you want to analyze, okay? So if you right click on the member, you can uh, select set analyze. So that will be the analyze member, okay? And uh, well, the C member is the bearing member. So you will see also this uh, red squares on the member. So that's fine. Then to activate, let's say the rotational, stiffness or ask the software to um, to analyze the rotational stiffness, you'll need to input the, the moment over there on that element in MOI. So the software will analyze the rotational stiffness around, well, around the Y axis, okay? So now let's hit calculate and see the results for this one. Okay, let's wait until it finish. Feel free to start adding your questions. We'll try to we will try to uh, answer those at the end. Okay, 
So let's wait for the results in this. Okay, so now, once you, uh, well, once it finished, you go to check tab again, okay, and go to the rotational stiffness uh, tab, okay. You won't uh, see the checks for the blades or the bolts. Why? Because we are in the stiffness analysis, right? That's also, uh, that's why I also recommend to first do a stress strain analysis to check all the components. Once you're here, you will see this diagram over here. So the, this is moment versus rotation, okay? And here in this table, let me do this, the bigger, well, a bigger table over here. You will see what item wa uh, was analyzed. In this case, is the B element. What was the component, okay? So that is MY. So that is the rotational stiffness around Y axis, okay? The load effect use, okay? You can also add more load effects in this analysis. And here we start with the results. So this is a blight moment, loading moment. So that was 700 kips feet. And then we have this MJRD. So that is the bending resistance of this connection, okay? So you will see here the, uh, also the lines uh, well, where that MG is located in the graph. Okay, so you see here, this is what the connection can handle. I mean, what moment the connection can handle. Then also you will see MCRD. This MCRD is not over here, it's not in this table, but that value is what moment the member can handle. One is the connection, MGRD and MCRD is what moment, well, what is the capacity of the, uh, the moment capacity of this B member, all right? All right, then we start getting the rotational and second stiffness over here. So as I said, stiffness is the value of uh, the moment divided by a rotation, right? And if you do like a zoom over here, you can see that initial stiffness. And um, let me see if it's showing the second here. I, I don't think so because it is at the same. Um, it is not showing the, the second one here. Anyway, let me explain you in this presentation what is that, okay? because I believe it is better over here, okay? So, um, let me show you, okay? So the initial stiffness, if you see in all the results when you're doing this stiffness analysis, is always in the linear part of this uh, stiffness rotation. Oh, sorry, I moved this. So the initial stiffness, again, it is when the connection is still elastic, all right? So you can see that the value is over here, okay? And we take that initial stiffness at two thirds of the MJRD. So that is two thirds of the maximum moment that the connection can handle. All right, so that's where we take that initial stiffness, but normally it is where the connection is still elastic, all right? Then the second stiffness, that is the second value of the stiffness here, is where the moment, the applied moment is located. So you can see here is the line of the moment, well, the sign bending moment, so that is the moment we apply, and where we have this rotational deformation based on the design bending moment. So that is the second stiffness. 
So that is a stiffness related to the applied moment, okay? Then we have the rotational capacity of the connection, okay? So that is the last value or the maximum rotational that the, that, that connection can handle, all right? So that is the maximum over here. And then we have the limits for the classification of connections, the, lim the stiffness limits for, well, to categorize the connection as rigid. Here you will see this uh, yellow line and the stiffness if it's a pinned uh, connection. And finally, we have that classification according AISE. All right. So this is this is like a quick explanation of what we get here. And if you see here, I have different units for the for the stiffness and also for rotation. You can change that in the software. Let me just show you that here because in this case, the rotation that I have in this uh, graph is degrees, are degrees, and uh, here is skip fit. So if you go to project here, and then you go to units, you will have here rotational stiffness, so you can change that from here, and also the rotation, okay? So you can select between radians and radians, uh, degrees, or gradient, okay? So that is very useful. Why? Because then you can uh, use the stiffness information for, for your global uh, software. I'll show you that in the next slide. Another uh, thing is that you can right click on this graph and you can export it to an Excel file, all right? So you will get the data and you can uh, create that graph in Excel. All right, so let me go to the next slide here in PowerPoint. So results from the stiffness analysis of the joint of that or that member that we select can be used for the improvement of the global finite element model in your finite element application, right? So the consequence of changing the stiffness of the connections is the redistribution of internal forces in the whole structure. Sometimes, I mean, this if you if you and if you put the stiffness for all the joints in your global model can be a huge uh, amount of work to do, right? Because you will need to reanalyze and reanalyze the connection, maybe so. This is very specific when you are asked to have the stiffness of that joint, I mean the real stiffness. Why? Because normally when we model in, let's say, SATPRO, ETAPS, or SAP, we just set up the, the boundary condition as a pin element or fixed element, right? But, I mean, if you need that information, you can analyze the stiffness of the connection in Idea Statica and go back to your main model and change that. Where you can change that, I have here some screenshots. This is from a stat. So you can set up the stiffness for that, uh, I mean, for the end of that member. And you can activate this and you put the information here. I mean, the stiffness over here. Then for ETAPs, this is a screenshot of ETAPs, you can also change that. Or the moment in the major or minor, depending on what you analyze in Idea Statica. And this is how that is that is changed. I test with one regular frame. This is if I set up the element as pin at the start and at the end, you will get zero moments, of course. And then this is what you get if you select a fixed uh, end, right? You get 63.4. And this is what the maximum moment at the central part of the beam. If I set up this as semi-rigid, that means I input the stiffness of the element at the end of that part, then look the value of the moment over there and look the moment in the middle part of the beam. So that change uh, very well, that, that make uh, a huge change, I will say right? So, well, 
that is up to you if you want to do this iteration of analysis. Normally, we don't do that, but um, well, if you need it, this is how this can be used, okay, this value. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, capacity design is uh, part of some seismic checks for, for instance, for pre-qualified connections, okay? And ensures that the joint has sufficient deformation capacity, okay? The objective of capacity design is to confirm that a building undergoes on uh, control ductile be behavior in order to avoid collapse in a design level, level earthquake, okay? Plastic inches are expected to appear in dissip dissipative items, and all non-dissipative items of the joint must be able to safely transfer forces due to yielding in this dissipative item, okay? The dissipative item, as we call it here in Idea Aesthetica, is usually a beam in a moment resistant frame, but uh, also it can be an end plate, for instance, okay? The safety factor is not used for this dissipative item, okay? And two factors are assigned to the yield strength of the dissipative item. In this case, ROI, that is, uh, the overstrength factor in the material of that element and CPR, that it's the hardening factor, right? So when you want to do this capacity design in, in Idea Aesthetica, you'll need to select a member that it's going to be the dissipative item. You can select more than, than one uh, dissipative item in Idea Aesthetica, and that will be increased in strength and modify its material properties, okay? So where, where the capacity design fits? Okay, this analysis fits for when you want to model pre-qualified connections and confirm that the plastic hinge is going to happen there. For instance, in this, in this connection where I model a dog bone uh, design or our RBS, uh, connection, right? So you're confirming that the plastic hinge will happen in this zone, okay? Also, you can see how it interacts with other members and connections. Uh, you can check the panel zone of the column, for instance, and how the continuity plates will help you to this design, right? So I uh, recommend to see this tutorial. This will show you how to do the design process of an RBS, RBS uh, connection from AISC 358 and how to use Idea Statica in this design process, right? It is just a tool to use, uh, I mean, uh, to use with your design process of a pre-qualified connection. That won't tell you uh, if it's correct I mean, if the design is correct or the limits are okay, it will just help you during the design process of a pre-qualified connection, okay? So let me show you how that is done with the example uh, in the tutorial, okay? So as I, as I am saying in, in this whole webinar, Firstly, check that your connection is okay with the stress strain analysis, okay? That is like a sanity check. Then do a copy, and in that copy, you can select the type of analysis you want to do. For instance, in this case, I am selecting here CD, okay? Once you select that CD, you will have this option that it is called dissipative item, okay? The dissipative item, if you go here and add a new one, you will need to select that element, in this case is this beam here, okay? And you can uh, activate this, so the software will calculate for you the CPR value, or if you uncheck that, you can put the, the value over here, okay? Then, 
Um, if you see here, we are modeling the, the reduced section of this beam. How we can do that? If you go to uh, this operation that it's called opening, if you create a new operation, I won't create it right now, but you can select it from here. This is the opening operation. Here we have this shape of dog bone arc, okay? So you can put the location. Let me put the transparent view so you see the dimensions here. Location in both sides of this flange, okay? That is on the top flange. The location, so that is the position. This is 10 inches from the start of this uh, beam that it's this flange of the column. The depth and the width of this arc. Okay, so again, we are just helping you to model this reduced section, but we are not saying if it's okay uh, within the limits that I, AISC 358 is telling to you. Okay, then we also add that opening to the bottom flange, and that's it. Then, when you're applying the loads, when you're calculating the moment that you need to add for that zone or that reduced section, you input over here in this MOI, but that, but, well, that moment is going to be applied at certain position. So that position is where the reduced section, well, at the center part of the, um, of that reduced section, right? So again, please review that tutorial. That will explain you how the design process is and how you calculate the moment, but Ideastatica will help you to increase the strength of just this element and tell you if that plastic, plastic hinge will happen over there, right? In this case, if I turn off, let's say this plate, let me show you how, how it goes. So let me just calculate this and you will see that the, that the that the web of that column will fail. So in this case, we don't want that. We want the failure in the beam and not in the column, right? So if you go to the check tab and see the equivalent stresses or the plastic strain, look at this. What is failing is the column web, right? So we want the failure over here because we want the beam fails first and then the column, right? So if we go back to design, we can use these plates over here, I mean this doubler plate. And what happens? That push the, the plastic inch in the beam uh, reduced section. So let me show you this. And if you turn off the plastic strain, see where is that located, okay? So this is where it is, I mean, idea aesthetic is useful. It is confirming and help you to design this stiffeners or the doublers that you, that you are planning to push that plastic hinge to this part of the element, all right? Also in the code, uh, it asks you to, to have the material factor as one. You can change that in code setup. But well, that's something you already, well, I ha we have explained, so you can modify the material resistance factor as well, okay? All right, so now let's, let's go to the next one, the next type of analysis, that is the design resistance, okay? The joint to some resistance analysis helps you to estimate the reserve in the connection resistance, okay? The designer normally uh, solves the task of designing the connection to transfer the known design load. But it is also useful to know how far the design from the limit state is and how large the reserve in the design is and how safe it is, all right? So 
in this design join resistant analysis, the user inputs the design load, like in a standard design, and the software automatically and proportionally increases all load components until one of the included checks doesn't satisfy. Okay, so the DR analysis or design resistance uh, checks um, the following components plastic in strain in plates, bolts, anchors, and welds. Right, so let's use one of the models I have used here, okay, this flange, bolted flange plate. And again, please do a stress strain analysis and do a copy, okay, to review that the connection is okay. So now if you see this model has the DR option here activated, and um, then you, you need to input an initial load. In this case, we have a shear force in the beam element and an MY moment, right? So you can see that, and then you can just hit calculate. It always needs um, initial load. And from there, the software will tell you the extra percentage of reserve that the connection has. That extra percentage will be in terms of all the applied loads. So you, I'll show you that. So let me go to check tab here, and you will see this graph in joint, joint design resistance. So here you have the percent, the load in terms, well, in percentage. And this is the plastic strain, okay? So this is the design load, and this is the design resistance. So the factor or the extra uh, reserve that we have is 66%, okay? So that means if you increase the loads that you input in the design tab by 1.66, that will reach the maximum capability of this joint, right? So let me just demonstrate that. So if you increase this to minus 166, because I am multiplying by 1.66, then if I multiply 700 by 1.66, that's going to be 1,162. And then I can calculate this, and you will see that the design resistance and the design load will be the same, right? So that percentage is in terms of all the components you applied here in the load case, right? So look at this, this is on the limit here. So if you go to the check tab, you will see that joint design resistance and this is going to be the same, right? So this is um, this is useful when you, for instance, doesn't have the the design load, or this is an already constructed connection. So you can see what is the maximum force that the connection can handle, right? Okay. So now let's go to the next one. So this is a fatigue analysis. We have that in the software as well, okay? So the fatigue analysis doesn't provide any final resistance or number of cycles that the detail can take. It just provides inputs to further calculations according to codes, okay? So it will determine the normal and shared stresses range between two load cases. Uh, always at least two load cases must be set, okay? The first load case, for instance, if you have an instructor that will carry a tank, a water tank, uh, maybe that will be the load that it's uh, just with the self-weight, okay? And uh, the, the second load case will be when the tank is full, right? So 
this screenshot helps to understand. So you can have the maximum life load stress and the minimum life load stress, right? So those are the two different load cases. And then Idea Statica will tell you if between those two load cases, you will still in the elastic zone for welds, bolts, and blades. Okay, so you can see here, stresses are available for bolts, welds, and blades. And it, this is important. It is assumed to be used for the design of high cycle fatigue details where no yielding is expected. Okay, again, please, if you want more information about this analysis, I recommend to click on that link and you will see our articles about this. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you do the fatigue analysis? Here I have the second connection because the first one is just a stress strain analysis. And here is the FAT, the fatigue analysis. Okay, you select that one. And then here you always have the reference load. In this case, I just have a shear force of minus 20. And the second load is going to be minus 70 kips. Okay, then um, you calculate this. And then if you go to the check tab for the wells, for instance, you will have the stress, the maximum stress ranges for the wells, for every well that you have in this model, for the two sections here. So the stress ranges are reported at certain distance from the well, where the well is located, all right? And the same for bolts. So you will have this column that will tell you if it if it's elastic within that uh, within those two load cases, right? If you want information in another part of the connection, let's say you want information over here, you can add here a working plane. Okay, I am adding this working plane as operation. Okay. And you can activate this that says create fatigue sections. Okay, and then you rerun the analysis and you will have the, well, the stress ranges in that part. So now you can see this blue line. Well, those blue uh, squares there. And you will get here the fatigue sections. Okay, so you will see the maximum shear stresses, normal stresses corresponding to the maximum shear stresses and the stress range for fatigue check are valid only if the highest stress is on the elastic branch. Okay, so if you're doing, uh, let's say, uh, you're analyzing um, a detail from a bridge uh, design, you know, uh, you can use this information to compare against the stress ranges in, well, in the code, right? All right, so let's go back to the presentation and let's talk about the final analysis that I have for you here. So the fire design is available for user, user set temperatures, okay? So the material, will be, I mean, the, the properties of the material will be reduced based on preset temperature and material degradation curve. The fire design is available in connection, okay? And, well, you will need to set the temperature for, for all the items in the connection. As you can see here, thermal expansion is neglected and not assumed in any models. So for AISC, this is from where we take the information for, well, the properties of steel at elevated temperatures and properties uh, for high strength bolts at elevated temperatures. So we use this table to decrease the strength of the material when you're doing the fire design, okay, in Idea Statica. So how does that work? Let me just show you here with this connection, then 
the last model I have here is the fire design. I am activating that fire design over here. Once you activate that, you will have this icon and then you can uh, click over there and you will get this temperature, um, let's say operation, right? You set up here the temperature, let's say 1000 Fahrenheit, and you will need to select the items. So I can select all the items over here and press enter. And here are the items uh, selected with this temperature. And then you just run the analysis. Okay. And then you will see in the check tab all the checks with the reviews FY. Okay, so that is the material yield strength. The original was A992, right? And this is how that was decreased. And the temperature for all the elements over here. The same for bolts. Okay. And you can see that this is failing with that temperature set. Right? Well, um, this is what I have for you guys. Um, let's go now to the Q&A session. Okay. The, um, yeah. Before we get to the uh, Q&A, I just wanted to have another poll, if everyone doesn't mind. Um, so I just wanted to kind of see, uh, you should see it up on your screen now, just kind of um, now that you have a little bit of basic knowledge about the different uh, analyses types, which ones do you think could be most useful in your projects? Um, so we'll give that about a minute and then we can uh, start to get to the the questions. Thank you for a lot of very good questions um, throughout the session. Um, there were some some tough ones, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to answer that. So we'll just um, again we'll give it another 15 seconds, let's say. Okay, so let me go ahead and close the poll. And now if we take a look at what the results were. Um, so at this point, capacity design seemed to be the most useful for the attendees uh, mm -hmm. here as far, and then stiffness design, uh, joint resistance and fatigue. Um, I don't know what it says, fire analysis is zero. Uh, I think that's something that's kind of getting built into the, the IBC code at this point. Um, probably not something we necessarily always look at um, when related to structure, um, but it's something that I think is gonna become more prevalent um, in future versions. Um, and also, well, if uh, once you start using the those type of analysis that you're selecting, like stiffness and capacity design, we would like to hear about your feedback and uh, what is, I mean, what is those user cases that you, well, what, uh, what are the situations where you're using those analysis, I believe. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's useful for us. Sure. Um... So we had a few questions um, and it kind of as we kind of were going through. So um, related to the buckling analysis and kind of color coding, um, the one question was, okay, well, let's say that the red color is showing in the member itself, um, not necessarily the joint. Can we just say that the joint, the connection is good and that the basically the member needs to be updated? Um, 
And I think the response would be, it depends on really, it's gonna more depend on versus the color, it's gonna depend on what those factors are and how they compare to the to your code. Um, kind of as far as where, where you're seeing that buckling shape um, occurring, whether it be in a member or in the joint itself, um, and kind of what that factor is, whether the connection is good or, or the member is good, um, or both. Um, would you agree with that, Andrea? Yeah, it's, and also, well, the factor is very important. I mean, you'll need to review this, seeing the deformation, I mean, the where the buckling is happening and with the factor. Right. Because, yeah, if you click, for instance, here, the factor is 10, and you don't have to be alarmed of how this is shown, right? right? Because, yeah, it's a high factor over here for that element. Yeah. Right. Um, there is some question as to the stiffness analysis and kind of what we use for um, the initial stiffness. Um, that it kind of, it, it seems like we're following more of the Euro code. Um, that's something that we're going to look into um, and update as necessary. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have I have heard that about the two terrors of M. MK. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something we, yeah, we, we will dig into that and update as, as necessary. Um, so thank you for, for that. I'm um, just trying to see what else. Um, even even but, though, uh, well, for that, just for that question or for that comment, um, you can always get the graphic and also set up the, the, the load that you want to, I mean, the, the load that you want to use to analyze the stiffness. Right. So if you select the service load, well, you input just the service load in that analysis and that's it. Right. But uh, yeah, we will review that. OK. Um, there was a question as far as with the stiffness analysis. Um, how can you. You know, input the, the length of the member, because the length of the member obviously affects the stiffness of the connection. Um, yeah, you can do that. Let me just show you here. Right. No, this is not the one. Let me open the connection that I was using. It's this one. So this Curves. is the stiff. Yeah, yeah the kind of stiffness analysis. Yep. yep. And if you go to design here and select this V member, yeah, I forget to show you this. So this is the theoretical length for MY and MC. Okay, so you can set up over here. Right. Yep. Um, I found that finally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as so th there was a question related to the capacity design um, and whether when you're just running stress strain analysis that it does the software not look into the panel zone shear. Um, and I think that was a little little bit of a confusion um, yeah. because we kind of talked about that. It, it does, I mean, confirm what I what I think, Andrea, is that um, even when you're running stress strain, it's going to look at the panel zone shear. It's going to look at the overall joint. Um, it's just not. But you were just using it as a specific element to kind of use capacity design when checking a pre-qualified connection. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. I mean, I put it just like a, let's say how you can take advantage of the capacity design, but normally we we review that plate. I mean, that all the zones, but in specific, if you're concerned about the web, you will see if you have a problem if you just do a stress strain analysis. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so I think, I'm just double, double checking here. I think those are all the questions that we had. Um, in the QA, so I appreciate everyone's um, comments. Uh, we did get a couple of nice feature requests um, that you know are, are definitely helpful. So um, you know, if if you come across anything like that that you would like to see in the software, or if there's a, a question you have, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, best way to get in touch with us for uh, tech support is either using the help at ideastatica.com 
email address. Um, that's one way. The other way is directly through our website and the user portal um, and just submitting a case. This way it gets right into our system and that's definitely the fastest way to be able to get in touch with us um, in the future just if, if you have questions um, and get, you, get your answers back as fast as possible. So um, I think with that, uh, we will stop the webinar. Thank you for attending. We're right at one o'clock. Um, great job, Andrea, and getting that all completed in, in the allotted time. <laughs> um, yeah. I, know that, I know there was a lot of information for everybody yeah. to uh, digest. Uh, so definitely let us know if there's any questions. And um, as we said, we will be posting the recording, both the recording and the PowerPoint to our website. So with that, uh, everyone have a good end of the year. And we will be back uh, in January with our schedule. So thanks again. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.